Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today, we're down in dry dock number three, run by North Atlantic Ship Repair, here at the former Philadelphia Navy Yard, looking at Battleship New Jersey on the blocks for the first time since August of 1990. Right now, we are looking at the ship's port side bilge keel, and you're looking aft towards the stern of the ship. In today's video, we're gonna talk briefly about the cathodic protection that the Navy installed on the ship. And of course, even if you're an old viewer, this is the first time that you're getting to see what the anodes look like bolted onto the outside of the hull of the ship. If you want to see these in person, keep in mind we still have a couple of tickets available for our dry dock tours, which are happening on weekends in April and May. Go to our website, battleshipnewjersey.org, to get your tickets today before they sell out. We're limited to daytime hours and a certain number of guests per tour, so there is a finite number of tickets. You can even choose to have me as a tour guide if you want. Iowa-class battleships always had cathodic protection in the way of zinc anodes bolted onto the hull. However, by the mid-1980s, they were finding a large amount of galvanic corrosion on these ships. It could have been the age of the vessels, or it could have been some of the new electronics that were installed at that time just leaking more voltage into the hull, turning the ship into a battery. Or, why not both? It could have been a combination of each. The Navy didn't really look into why it was, but they decided to increase the number of zinc anodes on the hull to 1,204. They concentrated these anodes in just two places, the bilge keels and around the propellers. Each space has strakes of anodes bolted on both above and below. So for the propellers, they're above where the propellers are and below, and also on the inside of what's called the Holland Tunnel, the cathedral-like shaft that uh, runs between the two docking keels. These anodes measure 12 inches long, 6 inches high, and 1 inch deep, and each one has two bolt holds that hold them in place. They're made out of zinc, and they weigh 23 pounds each. There are other kinds of anodes that are more strap-shaped, and there are other kinds of anodes that get welded on instead of bolted on. I prefer the bolted-on kind from museum ships, because if we can't do a yard period in 20 or 30 years, we can still send divers down to unbolt these anodes and install new ones. One of our major projects during this yard period is going to be to cut off all of these zinc anodes. We're then going to sell them. If you want one, we'll put these up for sale. I will talk more about that in future videos once we've actually cut them off. We wanted to rush this video out while you can still see these things installed on the hull. Once they're cut off, we're going to stud weld new threaded studs onto the hull, and then we're going to tape over those studs. When we come back and paint the hull, those studs are not going to be painted so that when we bolt the new zincs on, they're going to get a good electric attachment to the hull so that a charge running through the steel hull of the ship can run through that stud and then into the zincs without being blocked by paint. The zinc is then going to become the anode which sacrifices itself for the cathode or the hull of the ship. We've talked about this a lot before but the less pure item sacrifices itself for the more pure item. That's why so many of these are concentrated around the propellers. Our propellers are made out of manganese bronze but they're directly attached to the steel propeller shafts and they're very close to the steel hull. So the steel is corroding to protect the bronze propeller shafts. So by bolting anodes around those, it's the anodes that sacrifice themselves instead of the steel. Now, you will notice that even though an anode is supposed to last maybe 10 years on a ship this side, ours are almost 100% intact. We've seen none that fell off, none that were significantly wasted. Uh, these here are a good example of the average around the hall, which is why we picked this location. So that shows you two things. One, the zincs aren't doing anything. And two, our impressed current system is doing a lot of the legwork. So because the zincs of the passive system are not doing anything, we're gonna replace them out for aluminum anodes. There are three main types of anodes. Magnesium is if you're in pure fresh water. Aluminum is for kind of brackish water. And zinc is for salt water. Remember when New Jersey was last dry docked in Long Beach, 
She was then towed to Bremerton for mothballing, which is salt water. However, the museum took her from Bremerton and brought her up the Delaware River to the Camden, Philadelphia area, which is fresh water, a little bit brackish as the, uh, the salty Atlantic Ocean works its way up, and due to climate change, is getting saltier over time. So, we're choosing to replace the zincs with aluminums, which will be better for our current location, and we have no plans to leave the Camden area, so these anodes are gonna be the perfect kind until our next yard period. Now, I talked about an impressed current system. During our 1987 yard period, the Navy noticed a large amount of galvanic action on the hull, so they measured the ship to receive an impressed current system. We have the blueprints for the system, and this system was installed on Iowa, Missouri, and Wisconsin as they each went through their next yard periods. However, New Jersey's next yard period in 1990 was when she was being deactivated. So the system was never installed on us. In its place, the museum has installed an impressed current system in the riverbed below the ship. This is comprised of four sleds that were sort of pushed directly under the hull of the ship that have an iron silicate cast block in it and an electric charge coming from the pier running through it. So that is becoming our anode with the hull remaining the cathode. And we have noticed that these blocks are corroding over time, which shows that they are working. And now that we've had this yard period and can see the underside of the ship, we can see very clearly that there's no galvanic action uh, th that's worrying in any way happening on the hull or even to our passive cathodic protection system. And that makes us very pleased with our current setup. However, it is nearing the end of life so likely a future capital project after we bring the ship back to Camden will be to replace those anodes with a, a, a new system. So if you wanna see the work happening to our anodes or see if you can find any evidence of galvanic action on the hull, remember we are selling dry dock tours. There's a link in the description below, battleshipnewjersey.org, where you can go to get your tickets. Get your tickets soon because there's a finite number of them available. We're only in the yard in April and May. All of the proceeds from that go back into this yard period to help the ongoing restoration work on the battleship. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about the museum and our channel. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. And we do appreciate all that support. Thanks for watching.